dear students myself padmini working as a biology lecturer in sn bhat academy i am here to give you guidelines regarding the biology question paper which you face in the theory examination and first of all we have to discuss about the blue print of the question paper the blue print what exactly it is it is the model of the question paper and today we shall also discuss the model question paper here and for the first step we have to know what exactly the question paper has it includes four parts the first part is part a which includes one mark 10 questions which carries 10 marks which is compulsory you have to attend all the 10 questions second the part b it includes two marks questions where out of eight questions you will be answering only five that is you will be answering 10 marks in this section also here you have three choices third part c includes three marks question where out of eight questions you will be answering only five questions last but not the least that is part d it includes two sections section 1 and section 2 in section 1 it you have to write four questions of five marks each out of which you will be answering for 20 marks here you will have seven questions where you have to answer only five next the third one but the last section that is section 2 you have to answer three questions for five marks which carries 15 marks in this section out of which here you will have two choices that is out of five you will be answering only three questions you have almost 3 hours 15 minutes time to answer only 17 marks where in 3 hours 15 minutes the 15 minutes is given for the reading of question paper here you have to read the question paper a very deeply and you have to mark the questions which are very very easy in your mind you should not mark anything on the question paper and apart from this you have to write only your register number on the question paper apart from this you should not write anything this is you should underline this sentence and in 3 hours you have to answer the questions now for this we have a model question paper to be discussed here first we shall discuss one model question paper among that the first one it is part a which carries 10 one mark questions where you have to answer all the 10 the first question under part a is define key key is a taxonomical aid used to identify the plants and animals for with their similarities and dissimilarities second question why lysosomes are called as suicide bag of the cell because it contains hydrolytic enzymes which are capable of hydrolyzing carbohydrates vitamins proteins lipids etc third question is expand frc it is 
functional residual capacity. Fourth question is define active transport. It is using a membrane protein transporting the molecules across the concentration gradient with the utilization of ATP molecules. Next fifth question it is name the tissue found in hard part of the plant body it is sclerites. Sixth question it is what is the significance of mitosis? Mitosis is the equational cell division seen only in diploid cells. It is used in the cell division and it is also helps in damaging the repaired portion as well as it is a type of reproduction in few lower organisms. Next seventh question it is name the element which causes necrosis. It is due to the deficiency of calcium magnesium ions the necrosis is seen in plants. Next eighth question what are pulvinate leaf bases? These are seen in the Solanaceae members where the leaf bases are swollen. And the ninth question it is what is glomerular filtration? It is the first step in urine formation where the blood is filtered in the glomerular apparatus and it is called as glomerular filtration. The last question in part A, it is 10th question that is what is thrombocytes? These are platelets which helps in clotting of blood. Next we shall pass on to the next section that is part B. Here you are answering 2 marks out of 8 you will be answering only 5 totally 10 marks for this section. Under that first question that is 11th question define simple epithelium mention its types. Simple epithelium has the epithelium layer of single layer or single membrane layer of cells is called as simple epithelium. They are squamous epithelium, columnar epithelium, cuboidal epithelium and granular epithelium. Second that is twelfth question we have write any two differences between chondrichthys and osteichthys. Though we mention many here you have to answer only two differences. They are chondrichthys the endoskeleton is made up of cartilaginous tissue whereas in osteichthys it is made up of bony tissue. In chondrichthys we see six pairs of gill slits. In osteichthys we have only four pairs of gill slits. The gill slits in case of chondrichthys is covered by is not covered by operculum whereas in osteichthys the gill slits are covered by operculum. In chondrichthys air bladder is absent whereas in chondrichthys sorry osteichthys we have air bladder which helps in buoyancy. In chondrichthys as the body is very fat it has very minute tenoid scales whereas sorry placoid scales whereas in osteichthys it contains cycloid and tenoid scales. Next we will pass on to the 13th question write a note on ribosomes. 
Ribosomes are granular structures seen in the cytoplasm as well as on the surface of endoplasmic reticulum. These are of two types. They are 70S which is seen in prokaryote, 80S which is seen in eukaryote. 70S that is prokaryotic ribosome is made up of two subunits that is 50S and 30S. Whereas 80s ribosome is made up of again two subunits they are the 70 50s and 40s next the 14th question draw a neat labeled diagram of nostoc filament here we have the diagram the diagram has many labelings where you have to answer only four right so the labelings are mucilaginous sheath, the akinite heterocyst, the vegetative cell, intercalary heterocyst, centroplasm and chromoplasm. Right? Here out of many labelings you are answering or labelling only four labels. Clear? Next, the 15th question. 15th question goes like this. Expand. PCT and DCT and write its function in the formation of urine where the PCT stands for proximal convoluted tubule helps in the reabsorption of electrolytes and the water and also maintains the pH whereas the DCT helps in the absorption or reabsorption of some of the ions like carbonic acid or ammonia which also maintains the pH. The next is 16th question. Write a note on respirational disorders. It is quite common where we see respirational disorders. So we can write in general too. But as the board prescribed, we have three mentioned in our textbooks. They are asthma, which is a disorder where the trachea of the respiratory system is infected. Then the second one is emphysema, where the alveolar walls are infected. Then the third one, it is occupational disorder. Here the disorder is due to the continuous exposure for the pollution, mining activities, etc. Fine. Next, the 17th question. What is the role of ethylene in plant growth and development? Though we have many, you have to write only two. Some I can mention out here. They are it helps in apical dominance, it helps in the breaking of seed and bud dormancy, it helps in ripening the fruits, clear? Out of which you will be answering only two. Then the last question under part B that is 18th question is name the two contractile proteins or name the two muscle contractile proteins, they are actin and myosin. Next, we shall move on to the next section that is part C. Part C has three marks questions. Out of eight, you are answering five. Totally, you will be gaining 15 marks. The first question under part C is mention the type of gynesium based on the position of ovary. As we know, we have three types. They are hypogynous, there where the ovary is superior, epigynous, where the ovary is inferior and the last, it is perigynous, where the ovary is half inferior and half superior. The 20th question is draw a neat label diagram of cholenchyma and explain the structure. Here we have the diagram. 
the kulankaima is having different shape where it is labeled as cytoplasm intercellular space nucleus and a thick cell wall which represents the cells have a thick cell wall irregular in shape these possess intercellular spaces where the cell wall of each cell is deposited by pectin in other terms it is also said that the corner walls of the cells are deposited by pectin right next question is question number 21 the question goes like this explain the role of auxin in plant growth and development they help to initiate rooting in stem cuttings an application which is widely used in plant propagation second they promote flowering example in pineapples it also prevent the fruit and leaf drop in the early development stages it also promotes abscission in older and mature leaves and fruits they induce parthenocarpy in tomato plants they widely used as a herbicide in killing weeds in dicotyledonous plants it also controls the xylem differentiation and helps in cell division the second that is 22nd question is draw a neat labeled diagram of the digestive system of earthworm here the here it goes the digestive system starts from mouth ends at anus but the major portion are described here the mouth is at the first segment of the earthworm which leads to a cavity called as buccal cavity which the buccal cavity leads to a tubular opening called as esophagus and from the esophagus again it extends for the stomach and after that we have the intestinal portion where it has three regions that is pre tiflosolar intestine tiflosolar and post tiflosolar region in the intestine this is enough to write for three marks answer fine next here comes the 23rd question that is explain the exponential growth curve this is also called as sigmoid growth curve here we have the curve the curve is represents the s shape hence it is also called as s shaped curve here the s shape the first region goes like this that is lag phase lag phase is the slower pace of cell division log phase where we have the growth of cell division which is rapid and in the stationary phase the cells attains rest or the cell division is stopped it is according to the nutrient and other environmental parameters which affects the growth of plants in case of plants the graphical representation is followed by the determination by giving a formula that is w1 is equal to w0 e to the power of rt where w1 is the final length of a plant w0 is the initial length e is the exponential rate r the rate at which the cell divides and t represents the time taken if you describe this much it is enough for 3 marks next we shall pass on to the next question that is 24th question the question is like this write a note on joints of bones in human skeletal system as we know 
we have three types of joints they are the fibrous joints which are seen in the brain that is which joins two small tiny bones and which does not allow the bones to move the second one it is cartilaginous joint which is seen in the vertebral column of a human being where it joins two bones of vertebral column and helps in very slow or very little movement the other one it is synovial joint the synovial joint are of different types they are ball and socket joint and the hip i mean where we have the pivot joint then we have the joint near the elbow and knee which is called as hinge joint and also we have different types and this is enough to mention for three marks and we have the 25th question that is write a note on erythrocytes erythrocytes are red blood cells these are biconcave cells these cells will not possess nucleus and these have the life span of 120 days and are destroyed in the spleen right then the last question under this section that is 26 it is explain the mechanism of digestion in carbo digestion of carbohydrates in humans here we go the digestion of the food or carbohydrate starts from the mouth in the mouth the complex food materials like starch are converted into dextrins and maltose from there the carbohydrate digestion is taken place in the duodenum where in the duodenum the maltose sucrose etc that is all the complex food materials are converted into disaccharides that is maltose sucrose fructose etc in case of jejunum the carbohydrates are that is all the disaccharides are converted into monosaccharides that is our maltose is converted into glucose and galactose our lactose is converted into lactose sorry galactose and glucose fructose is converted into fructose glucose and glucose next we shall pass on to the next part that is part d as i said we have two sections under part d that is section 1 and section 2 out of which we are discussing now is section 1 this section 1 you have to answer four questions of 5 marks each total you will be gaining 20 marks from this section the first question under the part d is list out the general characters of the phylum arthropoda as we know arthropoda have jointed legs hence the name arthropoda or thros means jointed poda means legs the best example for the family you can take is a worm apart from that you can also take the example that is our leech or the millipede centipede etc our cockroach also belongs to the phylum arthropoda in arthropoda these organisms are the bilaterally symmetrical and these organisms are seen in the terrestrial conditions these organisms have the complete digestive system that is the digestive system is complete with mouth and anus morphologically the organism have the segmented body and this is called as metamere or metamerism 
this metamere segmented body the first few segments are fused to form the head of a organism later which it is passed to give the next portion which is called as thoracic region and abdomen region each segment in few organism possess jointed legs in some each part of the body contains the segmented legs here the organisms sexes are separate where the fertilization takes place internally and development will be indirect here we have the list of many examples or characters of the phylum arthropoda out of which you have to write the major answers clear the next we shall pass on to the next question that is 28 the 28 goes like this write the schematic representation of glycolysis yes it is a major cycle to be studied in the respiration in plants chapter fine the cycle goes like this here the breakdown of glucose takes place into three mole three carbon containing molecule called as pyruvate the first the glucose is converted into glucose 6 phosphate where the isomer of glucose 6 phosphate is the fructose 6 phosphate the fructose 6 phosphate is breaking into two molecules that is dhap that is dihydroxy acetone phosphate and pgal that is phosphoglyceraldehyde both the molecules continue the cycle to form pyruvate but here we are taking one portion of it to explain further steps in glycolysis clear they are the phosphoglyceraldehyde is converted into 1,3 biphosphoglyceric acid next 1,3 biphosphoglyceric acid is converted into 3 phosphoglyceric acid 3 phosphoglyceric acid is converted into phosphoenol pyruvate at the end it is going to convert as pyruvate out of this cycle why we are studying this to know where exactly the atp molecules are generated right the mentioning of atp molecules any dh2 molecules in the cycle is very much necessary first the atp molecules are utilized to convert the glucose into glucose 6 phosphate and and also the fructose 6 phosphate utilizes one atp molecules to break into or convert into fructose 16 biphosphate again the nadh2 molecule is released after the conversion of phosphoglyceraldehyde into 13 biphosphoglyceric acid from there 13 biphosphoglyceric acid releases atp molecule on conversion of 3 phosphoglyceric acid and from there phosphoenol pyruvate converts into pyruvate by releasing one atp molecule if you write only the names of the compounds which we which you are seeing here will get half marks and if you write the complete cycle you will gain full marks that is 5 out of 5 fine next we shall pass on to the next question that is 29 explain photoperiodism where we see this topic under plant growth and development isn't it there the answer goes like this all the plants require light and temperature for for its growth and development here the photoperiodism is responsible to explain how the light is utilized by the plants for its growth and development for according to the light consumed by the plants the plants are again classified into three types 
long day plants short day plants day neutral plants long day plants consumes more amount of light where the maybe from morning till night it requires sunlight short day plants require only a few amount of sunlight that is it requires the sunlight either very early in the morning or in the evening or in between a very short period it accumulates the light and for it accumulates the light for its growth and development then the last that is day neutral plant whether it has light or not but based on the amount of light it requires it accumulates and it will start growing right here we have the answer clear and if you explain this much it is sufficient to gain marks fine the next question is question number 30 the 30th question is like this explain the mechanism of vision of human eye here we have the diagram and the explanation explanation goes like this when an object is standing in front of the eye the light rays falls on it the reflected light enters the lens retina and reaches the retina inside the eye where we have the rods and cones from there the object we have a nerve or the optical nerve we say from the optical nerve the signals are passed to the brain the brain again gives back the reflections to the eye and which is seen in front of our eye right the entire mechanism is described here clear and you have to answer step wise to gain the marks clear next the 30 first question explain nitrogen cycle nitrogen is the most important element required for the plant growth and development here we go the about the cycle nitrogen is present in the atmosphere it is fixed by some of the organism which converts the nitrogen into ammonia this ammonia is directly or indirectly is consumed by plants animals decaying materials everything and from there the nitrogen is utilized for its growth and development later when the plants and animals die it denitrifies the nitrogen in the soil and that nitrogen again revert back to the atmosphere this continuous cycle takes place for nitrogen cycle you have to explain step wise or point wise for this answer okay next the last question under the section 1 it is 32nd question explain the role of hormones secreted by pancreas and adrenal glands first we will see what is the hormones released by pancreas we know that pancreas have two types of cells alpha cells and beta cells alpha cells and beta cells both produces hormones alpha cells secretes glycogon and beta cells are also called as islets of langerons which secretes insulin glucagon helps in the breakdown of glycogen and also some of the lipids where in insulin which plays a major role in the body helps in the maintenance of sugar level in the body that is glucose level the if the insulin is secreted in very less quantity again it leads to diabetes if it is secreted in higher concentration again it leads to a type of diabetes you have to explain in de detail adrenal glands secretes two types of or adrenal gland has two types of tissues they are adrenal medulla and adrenal cortex adrenal medulla also secrete hormones and adrenal 
cortex also secretes hormone both help in uh, maintenance of steroids in our body that is sex related hormones and these also helps in maintenance of the glucose level in the body this also helps in the secretion of mineral corticoids which helps in the maintenance of mineral ions here we have the detailed answer here you have to write any few points related to this for gaining fine marks next we shall pass on to the next section under part d that is section 2 here you are answering three questions for five marks each so this carries 15 marks now under that first question is 33 explain mass flow hypothesis it is seen in the chapter transport in plants where it is related to phloem conduction of food materials here we have the diagram and the explanation the diagram shows the diagrammatic representation as you see in your textbooks but you can also modify while writing the answer in your final examination the mass defines the amount of food generated in the plants wherever the food is generated from there the mass that is the food is circulated throughout the plant body in unidirectional flow that is an experiment to show the mass flow hypothesis how exactly the food is translocated or transported throughout the tissue in unidirectional movement the source is the region where the food is prepared and sink is the region where the food flows down right here along with the diagram you have to explain how exactly what is source and what is sink and how it is moving it is moving through a process called as osmotic gradation you have to explain this this is enough to carry five marks the next is 34th question 34th question is explain five stages of prophase 1 in meiosis 1 it has five stages that is leptotene zygotene Pacotin, diplotin, and diakinesis. First, we will see what is leptotin. In leptotin, all the centromeres of the chromosome will come in one point, and all the arms of the chromosome will be spread throughout the nucleus. The size of the nucleus increases. And due to the appearance of chromosome, this stage is also called as bouquet stage. And here, the centrioles start dividing into asters in prophase 1. Next, in leptotene. After this leptotene, we have zygotene. In zygotene, the homologous chromosome pairs, where the pairing will appear just like a zipper lock. Hence, the name, the zipper stage. Third, it is packaging. The chromosomes pack each other, where the chromosome crossing over takes place between the sister chromatids of homologous chromosomes. And the place where the crossing over is taking place is called as chiasma. And it forms a gap in between this is called as loop in diplotene stage this loop size increases in diakinesis the complete crossing over will be done the separation of homologous chromosomes also takes place right these are the five major steps under prophase one the next question is question number 35 where we have 
to draw a neat label diagram of ts of dicot root the dicot root here we have the diagram here you have to mention all the labelings exact 10 labelings the correct 10 labelings carries 5 marks and here we have the labelings here we have the root hair epiblema and we have the cortex innermost layer of the cortex is called as endodermis and inside the endodermis we have pericycle where in in turn it is also called as stela region the outermost layer of stela region is called as pericycle fine and inside the pericycle we have vascular bundles we have radial vascular bundle and the xylem is exarc in condition here we have the alternate xylem and phloem patches finally in dicot root we see only four xylem and four phloem patches hence it is called as a tetrarch condition fine and in the endodermis opposite to the phloem you have to show casparian thickenings the tangential walls of the endodermal cells opposite to the phloem has casparian thickenings it is made up of a protein called as casparin which will not allow water to pass through fine this with 10 labelings carries 5 marks right then we have the 36th question explain the process of urine formation i know you may feel difficult to explain this process why because you have to write the diagram and then explain but still you have to write to gain the marks fine here we have the diagram we have the diagram which show the nephron along with the vas erector clear and here in the glomerular apparatus first the ultra filtration takes place from there the blood or the filtrate flow towards the proximal convoluted tubule from there the handless loop from there the distal convoluted tubule through which the reabsorption of some of the ions takes place and some are absorbed by the blood vessels which is called as vasa recta fine and here the filtrate the final filtrate along with some of the chemicals like uric acid is secreted in the duct that is called as the urinal duct from there it passes the duct to the urinary bladder this is a schematic representation and here you have to show the explanation the last question that is 37th question of this model paper is list out the general characters of the division gymnosperm yes exactly this comes under our chapter plant, plant kingdom the answers go like this gymnosperms are terrestrial in nature these are having a short stem with bunch of leaves at the tip and at one end it has roots called as coralloid roots coralloid roots it is the name because there is symbiotic association of the nitrogen fixing organism along with the roots hence the name coralloid roots the leaves are of two types scaly leaves and foliage leaves which are arranged alternate to each other and the plants show two types that is male plant and female plant male plant possess male cones female plant possess female cones the male cone possess spores is called as microspores female plant possess spores called megaspores in a structure called as a megasporophyll and microsporophyll due to pollination the microspore set on the megaspore fertilization takes place and here the seeds are formed directly without seed coat this 
is why the name gymnosperm gymnos naked sperma seed hence the name naked seeded plants